Uh, well, thank you for taking the time to uh, sit down with me. Uh, there's one topic I definitely wanted to address, and I think I might as well start it off. Okay. Uh, is uh, Disneyland. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I I haven't talked about Disneyland yet on this podcast. And oh, I love you haven't? Disneyland. No, I have not. So you are the first. And also, <laughs> I'm a little intimidated to talk to you about Disneyland because... Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, my, you know your shit. Like, oh, I'm, I mean, I'm I a big know. fan. And, you know, I've been, and I have the annual pass, and I, I've got my sure. opinions. But like, I mean, I think you know, like, all the history, all the. I, I don't go. I don't. I'm not that uh, much of an expert. Um, oh well, well, it's just funny you mentioned that because, uh, you know, I always, I try my best not to go. You know, sometimes you can go a little too far, like. On our own podcast, the Mega Sixty Four podcast that I'm that mm. I'm on every week, I have to hold myself back from like, oh, okay, I've been talking about classic Disneyland stuff for like an hour. I, I need to like <laughs> limit that. But then every time I do somebody else's podcast, it ends yeah. up inevitably happening. Uh, you know, like, hey, by the way, uh, you ever have a Dole Whip? And then I go on for two and a half hours about, have I had a Dole Whip, please? This yeah, you is know, and- the perfect time to do it then because <laughs> yeah. I, I encourage it. I love Good. hearing. First off, I love Disneyland. And then I love hearing about like people who are passionate about, you know, certain things. Yeah. Um, so well, I'm just <laughs> I'm just curious, uh, just a very basic question to start. Like uh favorite favorite rides, uh, in either park, or do you wanna focus on one park over the other first? Well, I mean, Disneyland in California is all has always been my favorite. I mean, that's like the default for me mm, because mm. Obviously, I grew up here, whatever, but it's the original, so it gets all that, you know, all the sure. nostalgia stuff attached to it. But um, but I but I finally went to Disney World the first time, honestly, maybe like only like five years ago. Oh wow, um, okay. And but I loved it. I mean, I was totally blown away by it. And what I get out of it is, see, you got me going. This is go- this is gonna be a long one now. No, you got fuck me on, yeah, on, on, this on. is exact. I be- <laughs> listen. I've been wanting to talk about Disneyland, and I can talk. I can. I don't give a shit if we talk the whole hour about Disneyland. That does not, that is not a problem to me. And I was like, if I'm going to have somebody to talk about Disneyland with, Rocco is the guy. Yeah. So. Well, I, hey, that that's that's high honor. Thank you very much. Well, so yeah, I, I went to Disney World for the first time, yeah, maybe like five years ago. And I always thought like, whatever, they're not the original. It's not going to be that great. But then I got there and it's like, okay, because well, let me just let me just back up and say what I what my interest in theme parks is, is the era of like when they when the Disney theme park started, when Walt Disney mm. was like trying to invent the future, kind of sure, like sure. like my my interests are not so much like go on a ro- roller coaster and like go fast and whatever. Mm. It's it's really it's more like how they tried to make uh, the parks as an art form kind of like mm. let's take all our best artists and, and uh, movie makers within Disney and let's put them on theme parks and see what they can make in three dimensions. And sure. then you got, you got stuff like pirates of the Caribbean where it's actually like, Whoa, this is actually like theatrically lit and like mm-hmm. there's atmosphere and there's, you know, like there's sort of a, uh, an attempt at a narrative here and, you know, things like that. So uh, anyway, so I thought, well, Di- you know, Disney World wasn't built while Walt Disney was alive. How how great can it be? It's just going to be, you know, a couple thrill rides and that's it. But then I get there and it's like, oh, yeah, uh, the Carousel of Progress that Walt personally directed. <laughs> oh, yeah, they moved it over here. Here it is. And it's like, oh, right. oh I, I thought. I thought this was gone forever. Oh, it's here. And, uh, oh, the country bears that, you know, which was the last thing Walt Disney ever oversaw. Sure. Oh, oh that's here too. Oh my God. So yeah, it was like, uh, overload. I, I wasn't prepared for how much I liked it. So long story long. Uh, I like <laughs> both parks on both coasts, but the worldwide parks are awesome too. They're all great. So gotcha, to circle gotcha. back to your original question. <laughs> no, listen, this I because I could talk about Disney World. Like about, I mean, I'm I, at this point, I'm more of a, I'm more familiar with Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been to Disney World twice. Yeah, uh, I've been to well, I went to all four parks both times, and then mm-hmm. Disneyland. I've been. I mean, I mean, obviously, oh, just off. How many times do you think you've actually been to Disneyland? If you had to, oh give a rough no, oh estimate. god, oh I don't know. Oh, you might want to cut this part out. It's not. Gonna, it's not going <laughs> to make me look good. Um, no, uh, I've had. I had an uh, for for the park in California. I have had an annual pass for 
I think this was the fifteenth year. Of course, I didn't oh, go figure. Okay. I didn't go much this year. Who knew? Yeah, um, <laughs> right. But yeah, it's been about fifteen years, and yeah, I mean, I I think I go. I don't know. There's sometimes I go a lot, and then I'll have long stretches where I don't. But let's say I even went, you know, once a month since mm-hmm. then. How, what is that? I don't even. I'm. I, <laughs> I don't know if That's, I can do that uh... Off the top see, of my once head. A, once a month uh, for 15 years, that's uh, about 180 times. Oh, oh, no, it's way beyond that. So I, no, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely sure. Yeah, the, for sure. They have a counter on uh, the like annual pass holder website, and uh, what, that counts since uh, how many times you've been since. But I, do, I think it only counts like one time you go through the turnstile or something like that. I, I see. I, I see. I don't know what the limitation was, but uh, I think. It the last time that I looked at it, it was like four hundred and something. So mm-hmm. I, I figured like I probably it's got to be even more than that. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. I did not know they had that. They still have that on the. Uh... Oh, uh, you know, I haven't checked in a while. I'm not sure. Ooh, I and, I'm very curious. As well and I honestly is. think the last time I looked was maybe a year or two ago. So it's probably even more <laughs> more than that. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah. My history with the parks is, uh, I, I when I was a kid, like elementary school, uh, we we took a trip out here, and I, Disneyland was the first time. I didn't go to. Yeah. I don't actually think Disney California. We did not go to Disney California, just the Disneyland oh, part. Yeah. Um, That's probably for the best. <laughs> I actually like Disney California, but we'll it's, get into that. It's it's yeah 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 we we will. It's it's not. Uh, it's early days were a little rough, but that's all. Sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and then uh, Disney World, I went to uh, a couple of years ago for the first time uh, on my honeymoon, actually. Uh, we oh, decided wow. to go, and we did all four parks, um, and then we loved it so much, we went back. Uh, it was one of the winters, because uh, we, wanted, we wanted to go for like, oh, what was it, like a Christmas? There was some sort of like after dark sort of event or something like that. You could go. Oh, okay. You could stay in the park after hours, and that was really, really fun. Um, and so I, you know, we were just absolutely enchanted by you know all that stuff. And yeah. then we came to, Dis- you know, I moved here about two years ago. Uh, oh, okay. And I was like, oh well, I gotta go to Disneyland. Like, yeah. And I gotta say, uh, as much as Disney World is great and awesome and exciting. Yeah. Oh man, I just love the original Disneyland park. Oh yeah, so much. It's like, the classic. It's the it's classic. the classic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, um, you know, thematically the rides are just you know, even like the like it's a small world is just so pathetic <laughs> in Disney World. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, in Disneyland it's this huge spectacle. You yeah. know, just all the details like that. Um, yeah, are definitely really, uh, charming. Oh, Pi- Pirates of the Caribbean is not even a comparison. Like mm. you, you, you really see, you really see the difference between when you've got one crazy guy running the ship. Yeah, like like Walt Disney was fully in charge. I mean, the last ride that he actually like worked on, worked on was Pirates of the Caribbean, and you mm. see that ride in 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 California, and it's. I mean, it's like 10 minutes before you see a pirate. Like, it's all atmosphere and yeah. taking you through an experience. Um, I, it's the only ride I know of that I think has, that I can think of, that has someone whispering to you in the dark that mm. that you have made a mistake and you shouldn't have come here. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's got all this, all this ambiance and lead up before you even see a pirate and, and Florida is after Walt had, you know, passed away, you definitely have like, you know, choices by committee where it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The pirates are right here. Turn the corner. There they are. You know, it's very, exactly. you could definitely see the difference because somebody didn't, you know, maybe didn't want to spend that money or whatever, you know, but, uh, you know, Walt had no, of course, inhibitions and, and spent a lot of money, probably not wisely, but, uh, but you got stuff like that out of it, so. Sure. <laughs> um, I mean, we've, we've been watching because you know we we love the parks, and me, me and my wife, and we've been watching a lot of like Defunct Land. I'm sure mm-hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, yeah, yeah. I played and... Walt Disney in their last couple of videos with him. Oh, right? did you really? Oh, that's yeah. great. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, we've been loving that stuff. We just saw the the Epcot one that uh, they put out not that long ago. Um, yeah, that that was which, me which saying Epcot as a. Uh, I had one line oh, in that episode. Oh shit, that's yeah. great. 
Yeah, it took me a long time to practice that, but I, you know, I, I did my best. You nailed it. I've been loving. I've been loving. Uh, I love uh, the uh, cinematic sort of approach, and you know, it's something that I, I, you know, I see a lot in your guys' stuff as well. Like, oh yeah, a oh, lot, a, a lot of like actual effort, you know, being put into making sure that thing, yeah. you know, things look and sound you know right and you know homages and that sort of thing yeah uh yeah like <laughs> um yeah I, i've been enjoying that channel and i've been dying to go back uh to the parks but oh. uh, if you if you had to uh and i don't know how you feel about lists some people hate making lists i love making lists i do I'm, too no i really if like you it. love like, making I lists really... <laughs> i would love to hear your top five um Disney, let's say just the original park, just the original. Or, 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 or there was this. I think there was this Twitter meme going around where it was like you're you're the the five essentials. Uh, yes. If you were like, okay, you can only go to five rides in the park. Um, what which five would they be? What would your five be for the um, sure Disneyland uh, half? That's good that you met. It's it's honestly great timing on this because we were just <laughs> we were just here at our studio talking about this. Only in oh, the shit. last couple okay. weeks, we are trying to rank these things. Um, mm. uh, I, I think some of your listeners are going to cringe uncontrollably because, you know, they're, they're waiting for the list. They're waiting for me to drop like, oh yeah, you know, sp- wake up early and go straight to space, space mountain, go to mm-hmm. big thunder. My list to some people may be the most boring list of all time, oh, but try to me, me, try me. <laughs> the, what, what's what? What makes Disneyland is its charm. So mm. you're going to get a heaping dose of charm on the list. It might not be Hell thrilling, yeah. but it will be charming. Um, my list. I'm going number one, my favorite attraction. It's really good. It's really good at Florida, too. It, so I'm not trying to, you know, cause a rift here. But mm. Haunted Mansion is my favorite. Mm. Um, personally, that's always been my favorite ride. I would say... Pirates of the Caribbean might be objectively maybe better, but mm. I'm going to say number one just because that's a classic. But it's good in Florida, too. The Haunted Mansion is really, really good in Florida mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. as well. However, my number two is Pirates, mm. and that is no one's touching the one in, in Anaheim. The, the That's that's the absolutely yeah. It's the best version of it. So that's my number two. Um, and those are classics. Whatever. That's not too surprising. My number three. Um. Uh, I'm. It's a newer one, but okay. again, it's only really in Anaheim in this exact form. Is Indiana Jones? You got to do Indiana mm. Jones, yeah, because I think it's a great experience front to back. Where you walk, you're walk. They put you. What Disneyland does when it when it's doing its best work, it's putting you at the center of something, and mm-hmm. you walk in that temple. It's not. It's not even about Indiana Jones. It's like, yeah, he went missing. He's gone. Where is he? But it put it puts you in it like, OK, you go through the temple. Did you just look at the statue? Did you right. cause it to, you know, the the curse to take our our ride, you know, into uncharted territory? You know, it, it really like puts you in that experience. And I think it's so well done. So that's my number three. But number four and five might be controversial. I no. would love to hear it. OK, number four. Is I'm going to say it, the Disneyland Railroad. You ride that thing around. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you got to see, it's a piece of history. You got to go through the Grand Canyon diorama with the primeval world uh, mm. section with all the dinosaurs. Those are all brought in from the Ford Magic Skyway exhibition at the New York Fair, the New York World's Fair. Oh, wow. Um, In the 60s. And so, uh, yeah, Disney had all these huge exhibits there. And he brought that back. Uh, so that's all history. Same with uh, Small World. Um, mm-hmm. And the next thing I'm going to bring up, number five. And this is a very overlooked, very overlooked thing. A lot of people walk past this. A lot of people think, oh, that's going to be dull. I'm going to skip it. I implore you, make time for this. Mm. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Wow. On Main Street. It's, okay. It's That's another piece of the New York World's Fair that came to Disneyland. They've uh, in 2009, they restored it to where it was the closest possible to the original show, even though it's got Mm. a new they made the animatronic like more high tech. So Lincoln looks way more like 
you know, badass or whatever. Sure, you sure, got, sure. Like, it's the most high tech virtual Lincoln experience you can ask for. But uh, but it's a classic show and his speech that he gives is more relevant than ever. Um, mm. It just it's a show that evokes emotion and it's just right mm. there on Main Street. Like you could either like go get an ice cream or go see this great presentation. So I yeah. always say don't miss out on that. I encourage people to check that out. So that's there it is. That's mine. That is a great list, and it absolutely, like, you can get a sense of, like, why you like to go to the parks just from that <laughs> list. It's, like, the love of the, you know, the sort of almost lore of the park and the, you know, the yes. details and the craftsmanship. Yeah, um, that, that's what it was, and that's what it was for me. I was just going to say, like, uh, a lot of people have real strong, like, childhood uh, connections to the theme parks or Disneyland or whatever. Mm. And for me, it actually wasn't, I mean, I went when I was a kid and I, I, yeah, I had fun, but for me, it sure. was actually going in my twenties and discovering exactly what you just mentioned. Like there's like a lot of weird history and lore. Like you'll turn around a court, like you'll go about, you know, around a bush and someone points out like, Oh yeah, you see that slab right there. That's where the house of the future used to be. Like, mm. the, and they, uh, they tear it down. It's like, wait, what used to be there? And I would read about it. Like, Oh, they built a, a prototype house of the future right there. Like, you know, like, there was just like something buried under something everywhere you went. And so that's where I really got into it. So anyway. And it's so much more fun going as an adult. Like I, I enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed, you know, going as a, when I went as a kid the one time I had a great time. But when yeah. you get to go and have complete freedom on what you go on, also what you buy, <laughs> what yeah. you eat, uh, yeah. you know, it, yeah, and have full creative control for the day. Oh, yeah. it's so much better as an adult. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, what what defines your visit as a child? It's uh, can I have a balloon? No, that's it. But yeah, now it's like oh, I'm buying every balloon. And exactly, exactly. Let, and just letting them go. I'm just an asshole. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Um, yeah, dis I. That's a very good list. I think mine t uh, was a little more because um, for me, I do like thrill, but I also love theme as well. Um, yeah, and so, Disney does do that better better than than a lot of places, especially you know? theme. Especially yeah. theme, like I, you know, most other parks, you know, if you really want like super crazy rides, you know, you don't need to go to Disneyland. But if you want yeah. like the the charm and the craftsmanship, you know, yeah. that's why you go. Uh, it's just a, it's like a co it feels cozy going yeah. to Disneyland, and not Absolutely. like some other parks are like to me just sort of. Not stressful, but it's like you you go uh, for a day. You kind of you go for a day, and you're like, I I'm good. That's how I feel about yeah. Universal. Like I go to yeah. Universal for one day, and I'm, I'm I think I'm good for the next decade. I don't think yeah. I have to come back and, here. And, yeah, that's I I really I totally agree with that. I think uh, with Universal, you know, again, like as I mentioned, I love history of all that kind of mm. stuff, you know. But for me, it's that's that's I really enjoy their tram ride. Uh, like oh, like wow, they shot this here. That's cool. But then, yeah, mm. once that's over, there's there's not really anything else there for me. Florida is a different story. But yeah, the one the one in Hollywood just kind of leaves me wanting. I just, there, there's not really uh, a lot of that charm to me. What's different about Florida? Because when we went, we went to Universal for a day, but we mainly focused on the, the Harry Potter stuff mm. uh, because that was, we only had time for that. And yeah. we to see we had not seen either park, so we had we spent most of the day there. But what makes the Florida Universal better? Well, uh, I think the I think they just have a few more attractions that are mm. first of all, they have more that aren't just a thrill ride or a coaster or mm. whatever. Um, but I think they still uh have maintained a handful of rides from um a really like presentation based uh era or whatever you want to say like they still have the the et dark ride um mm, they, okay. they have uh they have a really incredible spider-man ride there they have um a, a lot of a, a lot of attractions that are really like in that same kind of charming vibe as opposed sure. to uh i just feel like hollywood it's like yeah we've ripped everything out we got transformers and it's like okay, okay <laughs> you know you know it's just I, I don't know they've gotten rid of a lot of their charming stuff right right yeah. Yeah, I did the um, I forget what you call it, the one where you're is it the tram where you go through all the different like lots and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, the back I, lot I had a, yeah, I loved that. That was great. Uh, yeah, that was def. I had not done that. I think the first time I went, I've only been I think maybe twice, and I think yeah. the second time we decided to do it, and I was like, oh, this is 
way better than most of the things in this part. Yeah. Yeah, but um, even you know, even that though has been kind of impaired um, because I, I mean, for a, the longest time, they had a King Kong portion of that tram ride where there was an actual physical city oh. that you went through with a with a legit like uh, I mean, it was only his upper torso, I guess, but full size animatronic Kong, which was as a kid was, you'd never seen anything that terrifying, sure. it, you know, and it's like trying to lift up your tram and it's all this kind of stuff, you know, and then that even that was replaced. Now it's, you know, 3d screen, you know, it's, I, I think, I think screens really kind of took over at universal for a while. I think um, they're, I think they're learning from that. Cause I will say uh, as much as I was not interested in hearing about, uh, you know, I, I, they're, they're, they were making a uh, secret life of pets ride there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I heard about that just like, yeah, not interested. But uh, that was actually built, you know, that's their newest ride. And it's almost 100 percent animatronics. Like there's actual oh, phys- there's physical dogs, which I know, you know, people prefer those to virtual dogs 99 percent of the time. <laughs> and um there, uh, but it it was ready to go just as all the theme parks shut down. So, uh, I guess we'll wait to see how that one went. <laughs> I I I wish it was based on a better movie, but uh, yeah, I am, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I am. But it's temp- a good step. I am for... a little tempted hearing that it's all animatronics. Like, yeah, that's... good, good, good step. And 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 honestly, too, like, uh, you know, some of that has come to Disney. They have a few rides that are kind of like, okay, there's, you know, a lot of screens, but usually they they'll, they'll do something with it that try that attempts to make it work. But I was so refreshed to see uh that their newest ride, Rise of the Resistance, the new uh, Star Wars mm. ride. Had a mm. lot of animatronics. Like it used screen te- screen effects too, but uh, it was so refreshing to see a new ride in 2020 with a ton of humanoid animatronics. Was uh, I was I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> so I've uh, a sort of goal I've been trying to hit uh, mm. is I want is riding every single ride in both parks, which I'm sure you've done, right? Right, like in it at in general or at one day on one day. <laughs> no, in general, in general. Okay, because I do know people who have tried to do it all in one day, and That's they're uh, not... go figure. They're always miserable. You, who would have thought that? Uh... Yeah, just <laughs> rushing yourself and torturing yourself is miserable. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just a, just a casual checklist of at some point I would like to have written. Have you written every ride in in both uh Disney uh Disneyland and California Adventure? I believe I have, except mm. um, the one thing I can't tolerate in terms of uh, physically, I, I really don't do well with like major drops in altitude, uh, okay. um, which som- sometimes uh, makes it really fun to fly. But um, just uh, <laughs> really sudden drops, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, so I, I have not done Tower of Terror or, or what in, is it in, now? Guardians in either, of the Galaxy. In either, in either park. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I just, yeah, I, I mm. cannot put myself through that. But uh, every, I think everything else. No, I'm sorry, I'm not a big roller, I'm not a roller coaster guy. Just in general, again, because of what I just sure. mentioned. So I have not done, uh, like, uh, well, now it's in Credit Coaster, but it was California Screaming. Um, mm-hmm. I've never done that. But every, I think every attraction in actual Disneyland, I think I've done all those or at least tried them once. I think so. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's what really matters. But yeah, so so you're not a big uh, thrill thrill ride guy, then? No, I mean, I don't, I don't mind it. But it's just like what you said. I mean, it's all about theming and stuff like that. Sure. Um, I I have no, I uh, you know, the, the roller coasters typically make me pretty sick. So like, mm. I'm I'm not typically gonna go on. Like in Florida, they have um at at Animal Kingdom, they have uh Expedition Everest. Um, yes. you know, I'm not typically going to go on that, but I, you know, but there's no mm. denying, like it's really well themed and, you know, really cool, but I just mm. typically don't typically don't go on that stuff. Cause it might make me a little, a little nauseous, but, uh, but, but, but like I've done space mountain, like for some reason, space mountain, I can kind of tolerate that. So every now and then I'll do that one. Gotcha. The only ones I haven't done are, I haven't done the Tom Sawyer canoes. Because nobody mm. ever wants to do them. <laughs> with yeah, I fi- only in the last few years I finally did. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm taking over this 
show and I apologize. You are not. No, 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 but, you are not. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm in, I love talking about Disneyland. Okay, because I just have to say one, one, one thing about the canoes. I sure. finally got to do that uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe a few years ago, five years ago at the most. And it couldn't have been a better experience. Well, it is. it was pretty much as tiring as I thought it would be. Mm, um, okay. But I went in expecting that. Okay. But uh, it was my, yeah, first time ever doing that. Uh, mm. And uh, the guy, you know, these cracking jokes like, all right, everyone paddle this way, paddle that way, paddle. And we took, we uh, turned around the corner of the river and the Mark Twain steamboat was right there. Mm. And we started like barreling quickly towards the spinning like rudders of the bat or whatever you call that, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, giant yeah. spinning uh, device <laughs> sure. in the back of it. And, and everyone's going, oh, we're going, we're going towards it. We're going to, and the guy who was cracking jokes, like running, you know, the, the cast member on the boat started going like, oh, oh okay. Uh, hold, uh, guys, just let me, let me paddle. Let me paddle. Let me paddle. And he paddled yeah. us away from it. The whole time I'm, I'm picturing that scene in, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I'm like yelling out, "How my soul is prepared to die? How's yours?" <laughs> um, and which no one thought was funny, but because uh, it wasn't. But uh, anyway, so we're, so he's steering us away, and it was like, "Whoa, that did get actually like really close." That was that was kind of scary. We pull up to the dock. The guy like stopped joking around, like he, he was like quiet the rest of the boat ride. And we pull up to the dock, and there were like three like managers all standing there looking at him. Like with sunglasses on. <laughs> like, oh shit! <laughs> like, so like all just uh. All right, guys. Thank you for um. Thank you for joining. <laughs> me. They, he got like real monotone. Just like thank you guys for uh, joining us for the Tom uh, Tom Sawyer oh, and, 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 and he got off and walked off with them. And it was like, well, you can't have a better ride than that. I think that pretty much. Uh... That's fucking <laughs> great. Uh, so I I was like, is this gonna be like. A, like a little trick like at the end like he was like oh no that was just we were totally fine guys or because uh, nope. uh did you ever did you do the safari in um uh animal kingdom no no actually i i no i, I never got to do that no oh okay i think i believe this is like uh planned uh, no actually it absolutely must be planned like but at the time i was absolutely fucking terrified so that you're familiar with the concept it's a safari and there are real animals yeah. and they can actually like you know, a giraffe can actually come out to the thing. Yeah. Um, you're familiar, right, with the yeah. Oh, yeah, overall yeah. concept. And so it's very fun and very charming, and you go through, and there's all these, you know, uh, wild animals. and then But then there's this part where um, you're going on a bridge, and the bridge started to tip, and the lady who was our guide... <laughs> Was very convincing and like oh like like act not like a like a oh watch out like on Jungle Cruise but like <laughs> actually like acting very scared and for <laughs> uh, for like a second I was like oh fuck are we like about to die and then it like because it starts to really tip you and then like yeah. it's fine and the whole like I was convinced I was like like I was saying to my wife after I was like wait was is that was that part of the ride? And she was like, yeah, that was part of the ride. I was like, I genuinely thought for a second that this was just like the one on a like, you know, 100,000 chance. Yeah. Oh, fuck, you know, oh, tragic accident at Disneyland or Disney World. Because she was that convincing uh, with her acting. <laughs> wow. it, was, it was not like the hammy, like, uh, yeah. oh, watch out, everybody. This bridge might get a little. <laughs> she was like, you know, very panicked. <laughs> Oh, man. And maybe wow. maybe if I like look maybe if I if there had been like a camera and I watched back maybe I would be like oh shit no this is totally she's totally like faking yeah it. at the time maybe you know maybe it was the immersion maybe I was yeah. so immersed in it that, that's what uh, I was gonna say like you know you have a you know emotions are heightened during those uh, kind of things you know <laughs> um so yeah that what was I was gonna say something else oh yeah so Tom Sawyer canoes I have not done and then. Rise of the Resistance. That's the one ride oh. I was hoping to do. Oh, and then, man. You know, parks closed. Uh, that, yeah, people people keep asking me, like, uh, you know, oh, the you know the park's been closed all year. What do you miss the most? What do you miss the most? Mm. And it's like my my list of things I miss the most are not even my favorite things at the park. It's Rise of the Resistance because we got that and then they took it. <laughs> you know, it's oh, like shit. I missed so that because it was right there and we had it, you know, <laughs> like, oh. uh, but. I was very, I was very lucky. I, I'm, I'm gonna rub salt in the wound. I apologize, but go for it. 
our our friend here, Kevin, who works mm. here at Mega Sixty Four, had uh, he got married in uh, January and uh, had his bachelor party at there. He he like had a whole Galaxy's Edge thing for his mm, uh, mm. bachelor party. And we not only got to go on it, but we had some, we had some, this is going to be really douchey. I apologize, but we had, a, <laughs> we have a, we had a couple uh friends on the inside. Wink, wink. Oh no, um, I'm just jealous. Like that's we, not, I would totally take advantage <laughs> of that too. If I had that. We, we went on it. We seriously went on it like five times in Holy one day shit. and we were like, wow, that rules. And then park closed. That's it. Goodbye. No more. <laughs> okay. But well you got to go on it. Five, over five times. But I don't think you could complain too much. It wasn't enough. It wasn't oh my. enough. So it's that good, huh? Everyone <laughs> I've talked to says it's that good. And I don't yeah. doubt it. But I, I'm just like, oh, it makes me even more upset. Because uh, <laughs> I've uh, heard it's amazing. Yeah, it's really awesome. I mean, I don't know. It might be overhyped for you at this point. I, I don't know. But uh, mm, I don't know. It, It's really... It's really why I was really impressed with it was it felt like uh, I, I I actually think, you know, there's some rides where you go like, oh, I don't know if I'm spoiling it, you know, whatever. And then sometimes it's like, well, can you really spoil a ride? Can you? I mean, honestly, can you? But this mm. ride actually really has more of a narrative experience than any other attraction I can think of where. Wow. There's a, a ton of steps to it that you're following through. It's not just. um okay, get in the vehicle. Here we go. It's, it's, yeah. um, there's a lot leading up to it that you follow through. It's like part escape room part. Um, Ooh. I don't know how, I don't know how to describe it. It's really uh, an experience. So I actually think not spoiling it, uh, is a good, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to refrain from saying any specific stuff, but, uh, sure, sure. but I, I will say that why I liked it so much is it felt like, um, it felt like, uh, Disneyland's greatest hits. Uh, it, it mm. was like every trick they learned from every big past attraction, you could write it down and it made it into that ride. Like, wow. I love when this ride does that. I love, you know, there, there's elements of of every kind of big ride they've done. I mean, uh, it's yeah, it was it was really it really felt like almost a tribute to all of it. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, it was really, really cool. I, I liked it personally. I, I thought it was really, really uh, impressive. Oh, I, I, I'm sure I will love it. Like, especially now that it's got your seal of approval. Uh, <laughs> I, I am very excited for that. Um, before we, well, maybe we'll, we will just talk about Disneyland the whole time. But I hear, here's another <laughs> Disneyland question. Do yeah. you have, in either Disneyland or California Adventure, are there any park or parks, are there any rides that you feel are very underrated? Um, underrated? I know you mentioned Lincoln. Yeah. Um, but any, anything where you're like, you know, I don't think this gets the love that it, or this was way better than I thought it would be that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to also, I mean, ev- I'm, again, people are going to probably groan during this. I'm telling you, but I'm, I'm mm. doubling down. Um, uh, you know, uh, the, I, I mentioned earlier the carousel of progress in, uh, magic kingdom in Florida. Um, mm-hmm. that was, that was on record like Walt Disney's favorite of the attractions he was mm. behind that he said like that's my favorite one and uh it's mm. it's changed they've they've updated it over the years uh the last update was I think about 30 years ago at this point so it's not it's not too updated but uh sure, sure. it's uh that's definitely worth checking out just for the history and um uh you know so I would say that the people mover in Florida <laughs> is mm. goes around Tomorrowland but when it goes into the tunnel uh there's a model of what they called Progress City uh mm. and that was the again the model of Walt Walt Disney's final project was he wanted to create in his mind the project Epcot the experimental prototype yeah. community of tomorrow he wanted to build a future city and that model was, is the, is the original model. Um, wow. Uh, that they worked on way back when, um, it used to be on display in Disneyland. And then when they built the people mover in Florida in the seventies, they moved it over there and it's just sitting there. Like they make some comment about it on the ride. Like, Oh, here's Walt's vision of the future right here. But that is, that's a legit original model. That's a piece of history. So I would recommend that. And then the mm. last thing, the last thing, and it's, Again, another <laughs> another total non-ride experience, but okay. uh, 
I really think the most underrated thing in 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 at least in Epcot in Florida mm. is mm. the show The American Adventure. Um, because it's an animatronic show, but you really have to realize when you're looking at the stage, there are gigantic sets and, mm. and, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a, uh, a point where president Roosevelt is standing at the tip of a mountain mm. and the mountain rises out of the stage and he's there talking about it. There's all these little tricks that if you really think about it, like you just, you could just watch it passively and be like, all right, that was a show about American history, big deal. But when sure. you really watch it, you can tell, you can see it's, it's the designers and the Imagineers uh, from the early eighties at Disney trying to do every psych out trick with animatronics. Like, Hey, mm. I bet you didn't think an animatronic could do this, you know, kind of stuff. There's a point where uh, Benjamin Franklin walks across a room and you don't even think about it. You go like, Oh, I'm watching Ben Franklin. Just, you know, say some bullshit. Okay, fine. But y- you look at it. And it's like, yo, homeboy is, he went upstairs and he's walking. Mm. How is a robot yeah. doing this? You know? Um, and, and all these sets, it, it, it like the second time I saw it, I'm like, these giant sets are all rising out of the same spot on the stage. How, how could these all be down there? And then I read about the history of it, and it's there is an underground subway train filled Whoa. with animatronics and sets that just they had that much land in Florida that they could just travel this thing around all day. And it oh can my you, god. Seriously, you read about it, and it's like, yeah, the reason why the audience is up on such a uh uh, you know, on such a slope in the in the in the theater is because you're sitting on this house full of sets, and they're wow. and, and this thing is you know uh, loading them onto a train and sending them through and rising them up on the stage in front of you. It's like I cannot believe someone figured this out. And in the late seventies, early eighties, with no computer like sure. automation running it, it, it's unbelievable. Um, that's fucking uh, genius. Yeah, so that I recommend that. You know, I say all that stuff is underrated stuff just because, you know, anybody could tell you, oh, check out, you know, this. Right, Again, right, there's right. a lot of thrilling stuff. Check out Test Track. Check out whatever. But I, I really emphasize those things in between where it's like you might skip it, but just just check it out one time. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. And, and, and look at, try to figure out how they did that stuff. Um, anyway, that's what I would recommend. <laughs> that no, those are great answers as well. I, I next time I go, I will have to actually. I don't think I saw the American uh, Adventures. It's a yeah. stage show. Where is it? I guess in the American Pavilion. The Amer- yeah, the America Pavilion at uh in World Showcase at Epcot. Yeah, it's mm. really like you you really gotta when you go in there, really pay attention to. It's in like the rotunda or whatever in in that okay in that, uh, in that uh, pavilion and really uh it's it's the only example of uh disney imagineering using reverse force perspective um mm. because in disneyland in california uh they use force perspective to make these small little cozy buildings seem a little bigger you know sure. and and uh you know they might make uh windows you know maybe a little smaller at the top so that it looks like mm. they rise up a lot higher than they do uh, the American Adventure Pavilion in in Epcot is the reverse, where it is the biggest facility. I mean, the building that that attraction is in is Titanic, but mm-hmm. they actually use um, they make some of the features bigger, like the windows and things like that. They make it look like a three story building, and it's actually like a five or six story building. Wow! Um, and and it's all a psychological trick because it's it's gigantic, and I think they didn't want the American attraction to tower that big over like every other <laughs> you know what i mean like it, sure, looked, yeah. it looked a little bit uh death star-esque maybe and so they they try to make it look like a little more in scale with everything else but it's it's humongous when you when you check it out try to pay attention to how unbelievably big it is and it and and honestly it really goes to show you the difference between disney in the wake of walt's death and them trying to like continue to do ambitious weird stuff like he did um Mm. and how much money they must have spent on something just that just tells you about like the presidents you know or 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 whatever versus now like they would only spend 
that kind of money if it was like Star Wars, you know, <laughs> or yeah. or uh, or uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that. They would never blow that kind of money on just like, yo, wouldn't it be cool if you saw, you know, them sign the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> you know, in fact, that's the stuff. That's the today they'd be like, we should tear that down. Yeah, you know, put in the Spider Man yeah. riot or whatever instead. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's kind of it's kind of rough in that way. Um, you know, to see that happen sometimes, you you, you don't want to see everything become. They've done great stuff with some of the franchises, but you don't want to see everything become a franchise. You know, sure. Um, that's that's the great that's the bittersweet curse of being a theme park fan. <laughs> <laughs> Is you slowly watch it uh, transform sometimes the, for the uh, the yeah. worse. Yeah, yeah there yeah there's the, it's the only fan base I can think of where you will get stabbed in the heart again and again and again, mm. and you'll go okay. <sighs> I'm going to go back for another. <laughs> Let's just do it again. Okay. You know, <laughs> what else can you do? <laughs> um, now this, I'd like to give you an opportunity and you, and you know, no pressure. If you yeah. have a topic you'd like to bring up or a question for me, I like to try to give, uh, whoever I have on the opportunity to like bring up something or ask something. If they would like, if you don't have anything, listen, I got other things we can talk about, but <laughs> I want to give you the opportunity if you'd like. Um, so do you have anything you would like to talk about or ask about? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Well, you know, it's it's great that you bring it up because obviously the world is in a is in a strange state. And, uh, sure. you know, we're in, in these trying times. Where everyone's trying to regain context for what their life is and what it means. And they're trying to find a light at the end of the tunnel and trying to perceive, uh, you know, uh, some sort of vision through all of it and, and seek meaning through uh, where their lives are at. And I think in the midst of all that, I really just wanted to ask you about more theme park stuff. I mean, I don't think we had enough time to really cover that. So really just <laughs> anything you want to say about theme parks, I think would be great. Um, sure, sure. You know, and just go. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, I uh, will get back to theme parks in a second, because I do think that is an important subject we haven't touched on. But right, right. Um, I want to talk about that you're in the new Yakuza game. Come on. Uh, uh, sure. Come on. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so do you, do you do you play the Yakuza games? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's uh, it's one of my favorite series. Uh, and uh, we uh, we did a video uh, last yes, year. I, think, I remember for that for, for Judgment coming out. And so like that really got me. I've always been a fan, but that even got me further into the the excitement of like all the new games coming out. I really love Judgment and, and I'm 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 really excited for uh i haven't played like a dragon yet but mm -hmm. as soon as i saw yeah i saw that image uh you posted that you played a character in it i was just like oh my gosh that that's incredible i mean and then it made sense like at first i was like wait what how did how did this happen then i thought well no this i mean this guy's got the voice he he, he could play anybody in this series and it, it, it everything all fell together it was like yeah he, he uh this is a perfect. Uh, this is a perfect casting. I want to. I want to know more about uh, the experience of how it happened. And uh, yeah, sure. basically, uh, yeah. How how are you? How are you feeling about it? <laughs> oh, I, I feel was great. I mean, to see that. Yeah, I was when I because um, I was in Judgment as well in a smaller role. Um, oh, that's right. I told. Yeah, that's right. I that I totally forgot about that. You're right. Yeah, uh, Tashiro was the character in that. The, yeah, uh, yeah. Um. Well, I mean, I'm not sure how familiar you are with my background, um, but I've been doing voiceover yeah. for about six six or so years, I'd say, yeah. professionally. Um, and so Yakuza, that was just an audition. Uh, I got... Oh, wow. Yeah, because I, I worked with them on Judgment, um, the mm -hmm. studio who, uh, who dubbed it. And um, they asked me to, for that, they asked me to just come in, uh, see what we could do. And I, I, mm -hmm. they gave me Tashiro. Uh, but then for Yakuza, they did send out, they did send me the sides for a couple characters. Oh, okay. Um, I forget which one's offhand currently. But um, I auditioned, and then uh, eventually they came back to me with uh, uh, Mitsuo. Uh, I voice uh, Mitsuo, and then I voice a couple. There's one uh, sub story character, uh, yeah. uh, and then there's one um, like a, a random mook in another scene. But Mitsuo is like the main role I yeah. have in the game, yeah, uh, and that was great. It, it, it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, how did this happen? How could this all? How did the stars align that you could? And it's like, oh yeah, I, I've known you've been a professional actor for years, and it's like, oh. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. You, <laughs> if you're a good actor and you audition for great roles, you're gonna get those. Roles. It's like, yeah, I probably could have put two and two together there, but it makes sense <laughs> to again, like, uh, it, it makes sense. I mean, you're, you're, uh, I mean, you're, you're a force to be reckoned with. So I'm, I'm, I was really happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I still think you know, um, you know, I have you know been fortunate enough to work on you know a lot of different like projects over over the years but you know there is there is always going to be not always going to be but there is still like a perception of like oh he's just that youtube guy like he's just that <laughs> youtube guy like what's he doing in this and then sure. um you know people go you know people who've like known who follow have been following like my stuff since like the beginning because before youtube i was um i was doing stuff on tumblr uh and there was oh. and that was a lot of, that was a lot of audio voice sort of stuff oh, okay. um, and that and that's how uh, my audience. I that's how I got any audience at all. Was that? Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know about the Tumblr stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, and so that was me just wanting to become a voice actor back in like I just graduated college, maybe twenty twelve or something, and I had no idea what how the fuck to get into the industry. So it was just a matter of um, you know just making my own shit, putting it out there. Yeah. Uh, and so over time, that led to indie games, and then indie games. Lead led to other things, and then eventually, you know, signing with an agent, and then yeah. eventually, you know, uh, uh, the stuff that I've been fortunate enough to do. I think, I mean, uh, I feel like in the in the past couple years, uh, I it's been some pretty big name stuff. So I think penal people are finally yeah. like kind of going, oh, okay, yeah, no, and then they look back, oh, actually, oh yeah, he was in this and this and this and this thing. But, like I think, <laughs> yeah. I think like uh, what Borderlands three was like the first like big like title, and then um, there was you know obviously little uh, I've done stuff for like Cartoon Network and stuff like that Disney, and so it's just like yeah. things have been you know piling up, and then uh, but even now with like with Yakuza, I'd be like, oh they got the fun the funny uh, uh, YouTube guy in there. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah yeah I get it. I mean that's fine, and I and I I don't. I don't mind how, like, what people might know me for, you know? I think yeah. it's just, like, I'm just grateful that people give a shit, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if, if you know <laughs> yeah. me for, if you know me for voiceover, you know, that's great. If you know me for YouTube or whatever, that's great, too. Like, um, it just, you know, I'm just flattered that you at least seem to care in some capacity. Um, yeah. But yeah, as far as the actual experience went, it was great. Uh, pretty simple, yeah. straightforward. Uh, I think all I did all of it in a day. Um, got I did it. The the footage was done, so I did get to actually dub it. Uh, oh, that's great! Seeing the actual footage, uh, except for the sub story character that I just did straight off the script. But oh, okay. Um, but uh, all of Mitsuo's cutscene stuff, um, it was all done, and even I even got to hear uh. Uh, the other actor uh, in the scene as well. So, um, oh, wow. very straightforward. And, you know, I've worked with that studio um, on other stuff as well. Oh, but wow. yeah, that, uh, awesome. I, yeah, my experience with the game, I mean, which, which of the games have you played? Uh, let me see. I think, uh, you know, I don't know if I tried, I, I don't know how far I got with one and two back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember if I beat him or not, to be honest. I, I, it's been so long. I, I thought, I thought I did. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I played three for some reason. I think it, I think it was cause when they, when they brought it here, there were like changes or something, or I don't mm. remember what it was, but for some reason I, I didn't, they I didn't cut play that. some stuff, I believe in three. Yeah, yeah. Some, I don't know. There was some, yeah, some reason. And then, um, so then I played four five. Um, I haven't beat six yet. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, z and then, oh, and zero. Yeah. I played zero. Yeah. I started with zero and I played Kiwami. Uh, I, and that's actually it so far. I have two, there are Kiwami two that I'll be, I'm, I'm very excited to tackle that at some point. Yeah. And then I do have the remastered collection they did where with three, they actually brought back all the cut stuff, uh, and they actually relocalized yeah. everything, which is very cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm I have that now to too. I, I I should go back to that for sure. But yeah, but, uh, yeah. I think I think four. I don't know. I I uh, four was really when I it really solidified as like okay, I love this series. So I don't mm. know if that's objectively the best one, but I, I still look at that as like my favorite one. But ooh, I'm yeah. looking forward to it because for me, I started with zero, and zero is just amazing. Yeah. I, I I fucking loved that game. So <laughs> yeah, it's um, great. Yeah, they're all great. Honestly, like I I. I 
I really, inc- I mean, I can't think of many more series as even if, even if you like one more than another or whatever, mm. I can't, I do, there's really, there, it's really the most consistent series in terms of like, you're at least going to have a good time, you know, like you're sure you, they're, they're really, uh, you know, I feel the same way about that as I do like the Sopranos. It's like, I, I can't mm. name, I can't name a bad episodes there uh, episode. You know, there's one, maybe I, I'll like more than another, but pretty damn consistent, you know? But, um, I had one other thing I wanted to touch on, uh, and that is I'm a big fan of your figure update videos. <laughs> I think, oh, no. I think I might've mentioned oh. this to you briefly once, but, uh, <laughs> I, I fucking love the figure updates and I watch them <laughs> every single time because I, I don't collect as much as I used to, but I do, I did collect a lot of figures and even every now and then I'll add a few more to my collection, but okay. I, I kind of live vicariously through you a little bit. Oh, uh, because happy to you, be of service <laughs> because you like, I'm just the, I just like, I like hearing a, like about people talk about shit that they're very passionate about. And I also yeah. love uh, seeing people's collections. And so watching the videos is a lot of fun for me. Um because not as someone who doesn't really collect figures as much anymore, I'm I'm more of a board game person now. That's the big thing. Oh, I okay. Now, um, but I'll still, you know, get some figures if there's like a really nice one. I just don't have the the shelf space uh, to, and even then I still buy them, but I I don't have the <laughs> shelf space to yeah. warrant it. Um, so I was curious. Just I guess first off, what are what would you consider maybe like your some of your prize gems of your collection? <laughs> well, let me let me just let me just say first, and you know, I, I know I, I think this is a relatively new podcast, and you know, I don't mm-hmm. know how many you know episodes you've done before this, but I, I you know, so if I'm the first person to um, interject some criticism here, I, I do. I mean, I want to give you some constructive criticism just so you can go forward and be a better person. Sure, but I, sure. I want to say just up front. Uh, the the concept, the idea that you don't have enough shelf space is a defeatist and uh, <laughs> it's a quitter mentality. Let me just tell sure. you that right there. And sure. I've been told that so many times, like, yo, <laughs> you're out of room. Like, oh, you're going to get that? Yeah, you're not going to have room anymore. Yeah, you're not going to. And every time someone tells me that, I find more. I go, oh, the game is on. And mm. I find more and more the question is though do you collect a lot of other things that's a good point no not really no (laughs) because so for me the problem is board games that takes up a whole wall like that's like yeah that's i have the big you got me there you got me there those are bulky ass motherfuckers so it's like a giant five by five wall i collect manga so i have a you know that's like spilling into shelves oh yeah um anime figures i still have like you know like some full shelves here and there, yeah. and I and again I have to make room because now I'm I'm a fucking idiot and I'm getting into Legos now. Oh no! Oh, which oh, is, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. So it's like <laughs> I don't have room for this shit, but I. So listen, I'm totally with you, and like you find a way. Like when yeah. my when my wife is like, <laughs> we're gonna put that. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'll figure it out after I build it, and then it works out. You know. And yeah. like, and as I'm looking in my office, I have piles of unplayed board games and just, it's just so. And, and let me yeah. say like figures that, you know, collecting figures, you know, if you don't limit yourself to, you know, if you don't put, you know, a cap on that, it, it can get kind of expensive, but Legos, mm. bro, Oof. you're going to need, Oof. I hope you book the next 10 Yakuza games, man, because <laughs> you are, you are digging a grave for yourself, man. You are looking at, I mean, start you know, applying for some loans real, real soon. Cause they're about to, I'm telling you they're coming. They're coming. I have to be, <laughs> so with the Legos, Legos in particular, I have to be very selective. So yeah. for me, yeah. it's like, okay, first off the set has to wow me. I don't know how, I don't, do you know, do you know, are you familiar with Legos much at all? Or I don't know how much. Uh, I mean, I, I hear about it. I, I, it's not okay, ever been yeah. something I'm into, but I, I hear about them all. You know, I have lots of gotcha. friends who are into them. Oh uh, yeah, my criteria is it has to wow me. It has to be something that looks good on display. So yeah, so yeah. there are some there are some sets that like are awesome, but they're like you know 
three little buildings, like all these little minifigures, all these little like tiny bits. And I was like, I can't yeah. put this anywhere. But if it's just <laughs> one big pirate ship or yeah. one big haunted house thing, sure. like I actually just, one of the ones I recently built was, it's a haunted house ride. It's a working tower Whoa. of terror. Ooh, uh, I like this. You, you crank the elevator up and the and the door is open at the top, just like on the right, and it, fo- it free falls. And to oh. me, I was like, this is fucking amazing. Absolutely worth the money. Absolutely worth the space. It looks cool. This is a, a no brainer. Yeah. And then like the most recent set I bought, like I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big nerd of Sesame Street. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, I used to love. I used to love. Well, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me just say real quick. Yeah. Let me get this yeah. in there. Yeah. Sesame Street had a profound effect on, uh, my creativity. I mean, I loved it mm. as a kid, but I really sure. think back to what, how, when I write stuff just on my own, whatever. I mean, we do a lot of stuff together, most stuff together here at mega 64, but when I write stuff on my own or write a video, whatever, I'm always looking for an emotional arc. Like, uh, mm. like, Oh, here's all this stuff. Whoa. Didn't expect to like feel this here. And then we're back to it being funny again or whatever. And I sure. really think that started with Sesame street, the way they handled Mr. Hooper passing yeah. away. Where, mm-hmm. where they handled it with just complete, like, I did not expect uh, these puppets to express uh, actual sadness or or, <laughs> or, right, or uh, right. mortality or, you know, things like that. And I think seeing that as a kid made me forever want to subvert people's expectations in terms of, like, what I'll, you would feel watching a certain thing or, you know, whatever. Sure. So, anyway, that was a left turn in that conversation. No, I no, I totally, I totally, it. no, I love hearing that because, and also, like, a lot of people are Muppet nerds, like the Muppet Show, and I, you know, I do like the yeah. Muppet Show, and I love the Muppets as well. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, but Sesame Street, for some reason, because as a kid, I grew up with a lot of the books, yep. a lot of old Same here. tapes. Yep. Um, so like, I'm, I know a lot of very obscure Sesame Street characters and character lore. Oh, and okay. See that? I don't. I don't. I, I'm not. I think that i might be a little in the in the dark on so sure 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 and again i don't know anyone who feels this way either but it's just yeah. this uh for me like like the uh the prime era of sesame street is like 80s 80s to me is yeah like, yeah there's i don't know if have you ever seen like the christmas eve on sesame street special Oh, I I know I have a long time ago. I mean, I can't. Yeah, okay, it's the it. one where Oscar tells Big Bird that Santa isn't real. It's very funny, and oh, it's very, no. it's very funny, very heartfelt. Like, mm. I think that's like that sort of time period is like the perfect encapsulation of Sesame Street for me. Yeah, it was a lot of focus on. A lot of different Muppets and the human yeah. characters as well. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I no, bought a Sesame I, Street Lego. I, <laughs> That's, no, I well, I did. I did just want to say what what that was for you. I think for me, what I was most affected by in the in the Sesame Street verse, I think that's what they officially call it. The, mm-hmm. the um, is uh, was definitely for me. Follow that bird and um, oh yes, the follow that yes. bird movie was a was a was a tearjerker for me. And also, who could forget the most emotional piece ever done by uh, the uh, by the that company was um, how they make peanut butter and or crayons. Yes. Oh my god. I mean, when they showed you how that was made, I mean, as a kid, you didn't know how the hell that stuff showed up, you know. So yeah. Was... Follow that bird. <laughs> I re I rewatched that a couple years ago. Uh, still holds up. It's still great. Really? Like okay, I'll have to revisit that soon. I'll it's just to... fun. Like if you like Sesame Street, that era, and just like that charming sort of Jim Henson sort of like that sort of fun nature of those films like yeah it's great it, it it gives me the same feeling of like uh original muppet movie something like that okay uh, cool okay same. i'm I, i'm i'm gonna give that a uh, you know is that in uh is that in 4k yet or where is that where can i watch that that's gotta be <laughs> yeah, somewhere. yeah i hope it's in 4k somewhere i don't remember how i watched it but okay uh, and is that you know on, uh, maybe it's on like shutter or something i don't know I'll yeah exactly it. yeah but like it, it, this, but be, there may be some bias because I am a big Sesame Street nerd. But <laughs> I think if you enjoyed it as a kid, I think you'll enjoy it at the very least. Uh, okay. No. Um. But yeah. Uh, so yeah. I. Oh my boy, we went like several different tangents. But I bought a Sesame Street Lego. <laughs> Legos, Legos collecting. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the final question I'll uh I'll hit you with uh before we wrap up is like um. 
as far as oh man, this it should this should be like a way better a way better question. But I well, wait, 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 hold hey, on, wait. Well, let's back up one second. What, back up, back up. Yeah, what's up? I forgot. I didn't say the the crown prize figure of my collection. I went on. We we talked about eighty other things, but I do want to get that in. there. <laughs> yes, what is it? What I is? I want to get it in there. Um, my favorite like classic toy is they did. Listen, I was always a Power Rangers nut mm-hmm. back in the day. I uh, be, I loved all the Japanese like Super Sentai designs. My sure. favorite classic toy is they did the 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 one uh, Mecha or Zord or whatever you want to call it that was sinister that they released was they, here in America they called it Serpentera, and it was okay. Lord Zed had his own uh, power Zord whatever and and. Uh, it was a gigantic like serpentine dragon and mm. that was always like oh my god this is the coolest toy they've ever made so that's my favorite like classic one but in terms of like a modern figure um you know it's a little weird but i i really uh they sold a full scale uh uh venom snakes like like arm from phantom pain Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love having that. It's like I got the—I don't know—I got this big metal arm. I just like—I—I just—I wake up every day and I look at that. and I'm like, I'm happy I have this. You know, it's not really a so figure, but it's just a that's big. That's the fake the arm. rocket arm thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great idea. Just to make I'm that is dope as fuck. Actually, yeah, they did it and it's full scale and everything. And I just every day I wake up and I look at it and I'm just like, yeah, I got this a big fake arm. I got it. I I can throw this swinging around. Shoot it at people, you know. It's just great. <laughs> and where where is that placed in your? Is it in your home? Is it in the yes. office? Where? Is yeah, it in at? my in my living room, like right next to my TV. Like like I have like a little display. I've got all the Star Wars uh, chessboard creatures, like statues of them, and Ooh. I've got a statue of the lawmaker from Planet of the Apes. And then above all of it is a giant fake prosthetic arm thing, robot arm thing. So it's just a. Uh, in order of importance to me, I guess. I don't know. I just look at it every day. I'm like, I, I just, I've got the whole, I've got the, the full size arm. It's just, it's comforting. Damn. <laughs> I think we should just end it there, honestly, about your, <laughs> okay. ad, adula- your admiration for this arm. Cause I like, uh, but uh, joking aside, uh, this uh, has been great, actually. Like I've been wanting to like, you know, sit down and speak with you just kind of, shooting the shit for a while now because you know we've done like you know sort of like events together right like uh yeah. game days and stuff but we never yeah. really had time to like you know actually kind of sit down and talk and yeah i feel like that's true I, fe- I feel like this was a good opportunity for me to like uh you know get get to know you a little better and i, I think uh i've it's been it's, i've had a good time so i hope i hope it was uh um uh, halfway decent for you well uh, i mean you any anytime i get to uh talk for 30 minutes about the america pavilion at epcot I mean, that's, that's a but good that's opportunity. exactly but, what i was hoping for <laughs> as well but but i want to fight i want to fire back just real quick and say uh you mentioned we did yeah you did that we did the mega 64 game days event a couple years back we weren't able mm. to do it this year obviously where there's not a lot of events happening right now but uh you know, everyone on Twitter has been like posting their memories of, of, of this. It's kind of a mini convention we do every year and, and Mm -hmm. people have been posting their memories from it. And so many people have been posting, uh, you know, that they took a picture with you and, and Mm -hmm. uh, how much fun they had watching your panel. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you again, like, you know, for doing that. And like, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people really appreciated that you did that. And, uh, everyone enjoyed you, you know, you speaking there and, and people still remember it really fondly. So I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of I'm glad to hear everyone that. who yeah. was at the show. And then, uh, and then, you know, a lot of times we do that event and people will come and do a presentation and then that's the last we see of them. But you actually, you went to Disneyland with everyone the next day and that was mm. really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, everyone yeah, really it's... appreciated that. And I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> on behalf uh, well i mean for me you know and just to sh- shoot some nice things back you know it's, for me it was a no-brainer like you know mega 64 been a big fan uh for a very very long time so <laughs> well, uh, you. you know I, I was watching your guys' stuff in high school so uh wow. it, yeah yeah long Thanks. long time and to see kind of like how you guys have grown and like really 
sort of developed your craft like like i've said like i kind of touched on it before but like you know stuff like the funk land stuff like you guys where you know there is a real there's real like i think artistic almost cinema not almost artistic cinematic value and effort put into stuff that you produce uh it's great to see and especially I- like uh from someone like me who doesn't give a shit on youtube <laughs> <laughs> like i just put out you know whatever whatever you know i feel like but it, uh, I definitely get the sense, like, like for example, oh, you know, now I'm just fanboying at this point, but you know, anytime you guys put out like a behind the scenes video or whatever, yeah. I really enjoy watching that kind of stuff. And you know, oh, I think, you. I mean, if it wasn't already clear, already, clear already, everybody, go check out Mega sixty four. Which, uh, where can, where's the best way to reach you and also Mega sixty four? Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have Mega64.com is kind of a hub of all our stuff, but uh, we kind of like to do something everywhere, you know? We, we don't sure. just hug one kind of to one platform. So, I mean, our all of our videos are typically on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mega64. Um, mm-hmm. We're on Twitch. We're, we, we literally stream a decade plus of our content on, on Twitch literally 24 hours a day. Wow. Um, so if you want to just like, check out you know hop on the stream while you're working or something maybe check out you know what, what we're doing there it's a it's a smorgasbord of stuff there so that's uh we're uh we're uh mega 64 podcast on twitch um and then we uh yeah we have a podcast we do every week uh mega 64 podcast look that up on you know itunes or spotify or whatever um and uh yeah on all on all pla- yeah mega 64 on twitter we're on you know we're on all that stuff so we try to do yeah. something on, on on all of it, you know. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Although, although with Twitch, I don't know what the future is because with all these uh, music takedowns coming out, I mean, we mm. we pretty much play we play uh, Fleetwood Mac pretty much twenty four seven. So I don't know how that's going to affect our future. You know, we're we're, <laughs> we're pretty much a uh, you know we're playing uh, songs by Sticks pretty much mm. all day long. So uh, that Sticks with a Y. If anybody hasn't you know isn't familiar, a Y X. Right uh just yeah i highly recommend anyone listening to this to check out mega 64 they've been going a long time they're still going strong and uh i think for me also it's just i i I, when i watch stuff that you guys create i get i feel the sort of fun and creativity you guys i i'm imagining you guys must have been experiencing (laughs) while making it Uh, yeah so uh yeah (laughs) absolutely Check that shit out. Um, thank you yeah. very much. No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, thank you. This has been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't get to half the theme park stuff I wanted, so just let me know when I can come back on, and I'll finally get to the rest. So I mean, thanks. we didn't even talk about <laughs> Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, oh yeah, but th- yeah, that's probably for the best though, because that park is a little bit like anemic. You know, it just in terms of it's, not, it's kind of ugly there's not much going on you know, it's kind of <laughs> empty just yeah you know sure. literally literally just today no joke just today before we recorded this mm-hmm. i someone on twitter that i follow is there right now mm. and and they literally they posted a video that i watched just before this where they said again you really got to look at the details and all the little things that like are, are little little unnoticed things by design and he said he posted on there watch this reveal really focus on the reveal here and it's walking mm. up to the park and on oh oh you walk you walk through this structure to get into disney sea okay let's go through these arches okay and then you know it looks nice but as you walk through it just reveals the entire mysterious island on the body of water mm-hmm. in front of you like like it, it's it's almost like it's like a theatrical reveal like like you walk sure. through this little archway and suddenly bam there it all is it's really incredible i should retweet that video so uh anyway I, you got me on this again you you were trying to wrap it up <laughs> you know you fuck to- it that you know next time i have you on or next time we just talk let's just talk we can just talk about disneyland like or yeah Disney, yeah all the parks or whatever okay sure. if you i mean i hope you got enough hard drive space for that episode that's all i'm saying <laughs>